Hey, this is Presh Tallwalker. Please mind your decisions. A bag contains only red, gold, and green counters. Red, gold, and green, red, gold, and green. Alice takes at random a counter from the bag, and then she puts the counter back in the bag. Bob does the same. He takes at random a counter and then returns it to the bag. The probability that both counters are red or that both counters are gold is 5 over 16. The probability that the first counter is red and the second counter is not red is 1 over 4. Charlie takes at random a counter from the bag. What is the probability that Charlie takes a gold counter? This problem is adapted from a GCSE exam. This was a probability problem that many students found to be tricky and they didn't even know how to start this problem. If you'd like to solve the problem, pause the video right now. And when you're ready, you can keep watching the video to check your solution or to learn how to solve this problem. So ultimately this problem translates into the following equations. This is a system of two equations in two variables, and I expect you would be able to solve this. You would solve for x, and then you would go and solve for y, which is equal to 1 fourth, and that's the probability of drawing a gold counter. But how do we get to these equations? Let's start from the beginning. The story involves a lot of details. So let's break it up into parts. Let's focus on these two sentences. Notice that Alice takes a counter and then puts it back in the bag, and Bob does the same thing. These details indicate we are sampling with replacement. The probability of drawing each of the colors is the same on each draw. Consequently, Let's focus on the first sentence that the bag only has red, gold, and green counters. Since we're sampling with replacement, we can specify a probability for drawing each color. Let's write x to be the probability of drawing a red counter, y to be the probability of drawing a gold counter, and z to be the probability of drawing a green counter. Now finally, you actually don't need this variable z because green counters don't play a part in the equations and in the ultimate solution. It's a little bit of a distraction. Now let's focus on the next sentence. The probability that both counters are red or that both counters are gold is 5 over 16. What's the probability that both counters are red? We need a red counter on the first turn and then we need a red counter on the second turn. Notice it's the same probability because we're sampling with replacement. This becomes x times x, which is x squared. We can do a similar calculation for the probability that both counters are gold. We need a gold counter on the first draw and then the second draw. This will be y times y, which is y squared. Now we want the sum of these two events to be 5 over 16. This is going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to 5 over 16. Let's then focus on the next sentence. What's the probability that the first counter is red? Well, that'll be x. We then need the probability that the second counter is not red. So we want to multiply these two probabilities. Since the probability of drawing a red counter is x, the probability of drawing a not red counter will be 1 minus x. We multiply these two together, and we have x times the quantity 1 minus x. Now we need this to be equal to 1 over 4. We have a single equation in just one variable x. So let's expand this out, and then solve this quadratic equation. We get the solution that x is equal to 1 over 2. We can then take this solution, and then go back to our other equation, that x squared plus y squared is equal to 5 over 16, and we can solve for y, which is the probability that Charlie takes a gold counter. Substituting in x is equal to 1 half, and then simplifying, 
we end up that y is equal to plus or minus 1 over 4. Since we're dealing with probability, we need y to be greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, we get the single solution that y is equal to 1 over 4. And that's the answer. The probability that Charlie takes a gold counter is 1 fourth. So it's a pretty tricky problem, but it becomes more manageable when you break it down into steps. Thanks for watching and for making Mind Your Decisions one of the best channels on YouTube. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support.